welcome to the video. Thank you so much for clicking on it. I very much appreciate it. I wanted to go through some orchids with you today that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. And they've always been a little bit of a, yeah, either a struggle or not a struggle. But again, a quick update on a few candidates. And this is my Chantilly Lace Twinkle. <laughs> back from an order of 2018 that still has me in a PTSD mode every time I'm reminded and well that's a lot because some of the orchids I still have from that order I've been babying trying to make survive and my Chantilly Lace Twinkle is one of those however it would appear that year four something has changed has she improved I would say there is something going on apart from the fact I'm not getting it to focus Que raro. There we go. Something is going on that is different from all the years that I've noticed prior, and that is this new growth right here. This is one of the prettiest growths that I have seen in a very, very long time, because this was the growth from last year, and even though it looks really pretty, it did not produce pretty roots. Pretty roots, in my opinion, are those that come out strong with white velamen. If you see staining, that is seaweed. These roots are the strongest I have ever seen on this orchid. The older ones always looked dirty and stained from jump the moment that they left the base of the orchid. And that means that it is afflicted with Fusarium, in my opinion, not that I would know, not that I can be 100% sure because I have never taken anything off the rhizome. But this orchid did come in that order that had a Fusarium infected orchid in it and it is possible that some of the other orchids that I lost in rapid succession back in the day also had Fusarium. I didn't know, didn't check, didn't care. I was angry. I binned them. And you know me, I will not bin anything if it still has a sign of green on it. So it was pretty, pretty bad. And this one, of course, had a sign of green, so we kept her, but she was never, ever vigorous. I cannot believe if this one is actually going to start growing properly for me because I have been soaking her with Faisan 20 ever so often, not a rigorous regime per se, but you know, ever so often, a little bit of Faisan 20 into the pot. And yeah, I am super happy. I'm stoked that I'm seeing this result for now because Fusarium <laughs> can attack at any time and take out the orchid. So here you see, for example, a root tip that has died. That was normal for every single root with other growths that were coming out in the previous years. You can see that this one has extended and this one started to die and it wants to die, but now it's starting on another little bit of a root tip. And I believe that is because of the Lekka. This one had me nervous thinking we're going to be back with the same thing but all these other ones started to grow and ah, uh, <laughs> they've never been that pretty on my Chantilly Lace Twinkle. So fingers crossed, we may, we may be getting this orchid to some form of health. Another orchid from that diabolical order is my Tetratonia Dark Prince has never bloomed for me and has always struggled and languished and mainly with scale. Scale has been in the past years its main takedown threat. Maybe other issues are in there as well because once again we can see right here blackened roots and that is not seaweed. Seaweed has a brown staining and when a root comes out and it is new, supposedly new, it should be nice clean white depending on the orchid, not blackened like that. Any black stains you see on the leaves, that is scale from previous years. That is the damage what's been left behind. I do have a video on this orchid with the repot, the cleanup, and how icky it was around the base. That has not repeated itself in the last year since that repot. And I've had several new growths come and hold on and develop. And, you know, this morning I did my scale prevention treatment. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to include you in this update. Because the 2021 repot, this orchid fell into four pieces after I had cleaned her up. I've lost some growths down here, but some are still fighting to hold on. I've got new growths coming as well, which is unusual for her this time of year. But you know what? I don't care about the timing, just be healthy. So there's one right there, and there's another teeny tiny one coming out right at the base over there. There we go, right there. 
So this orchid is trying and I am trying to help her as best as possible and I see something that is akin to scale but it's a dead body. Several dead bodies as a matter of fact and right on a new growth tucked up in the back here. So pest prevention is working. Those are all dead. But you see this orchid is extremely weak. It's a reoccurring theme when it comes to the order of 2018. Weak orchids, fusarium inflicted orchids, whether they came infected or were infected in the box with the confirmed fusarium candidate, I don't know. Always weak, always struggling. This one, especially with scale. Seeing as it keeps trying, I will too. If it is going to be strong enough, maybe next year I'm going to pot her up in lava rock. I didn't see a rapid decline with the Lekka, so I left her alone. I don't want to keep disturbing her, but I can see that there is progress and it is possible that come next year or whenever her new route starts, she is going to go into a semi-hydro or self-watering setup just with lava rock. And we'll see if that helps any better. Anyway, Tetratonia Dark Prince is still with us. This is one of my favorites here, also came from that dubious order. This is Dendrobium tetragonum variety Gianteum, which I always loved and enjoyed watching it grow. This orchid, to my understanding, was never afflicted with anything because the growth habit just kept improving year in, year out. Love this orchid two bits. She is in small lava rock in a semi-hydro setup. And the reason she is featured here today is I have not had a single new growth from her all year. That is a first. Very, very surprised. I wasn't even suspicious when she didn't bring out her second flush of flowers that she normally brings out for me. I get two flushes of blooms and I didn't get that. And I thought, well, yay, at least she's putting energy into maybe providing me with two new growths in 2022. Because with her first year with me, she gave me two new growths and then subsequent years only a single growth. Look, it didn't matter because all the growths that she grew with me were much bigger than the previous year's growths. But here in 2022, nada, not a light. Very, very strange. Usually she starts her new growth in July. Now I have had a very horrendous spring. So, okay, let's delay that and let's say she'll start a new growth August sometime. There's still plenty of time for her to be able to mature some new growths. We are now in October and I've got nothing. And I don't see any kind of pest problem like I've had with other dendrobiums, mites or thrips or something like that nothing even though she was living next to one that was afflicted with the mites so i really don't know what's up with her but i just thought i would show you that because i have a specific video on this orchid that i absolutely enjoyed so much showing you how quickly these growths actually grow you can watch them day by day and i was so looking forward to that this year i have been denied bueno hakuna matata she's alive this is my Demophorcus Lowei. <laughs> it doesn't look like much, does it? But this has been an OG in my collection from Jump. I've had her since 2018. And this is what I have to show for, for now. Now, this season has been the season of repotting orchids from broken pots into pots that aren't brittle and will fall out of my hand. The exception being my Demophorcus Lowei because she doesn't need a repot. And as we are heading into winter, I'm not even going to start now. She started to grow some new roots around the edge, which is awesome. She is definitely happy in her pot, Lekka and self-watering. I'm just going to have to be careful when I take her out to flush her. But I don't have that many broken pots left in my collection, which is awesome. We got around to quite a few this year. This one was not a candidate, whether the pot is broken or not. Now, I lost a leaf very early in the season on this one, and I was like, Pero por qué? You know, I mean, why? At the beginning of the season, when it finally started to warm up, I gave her a little bit of fertilizer. I do not fertilize her much because she's such a slow grower. Projected bloom date is 2040. Yeah, we'll see who gets to see those if she lives that long. But yeah, so I fertilized her just a teeny tiny bit and promptly incurred leaf burn. And I thought, you know what? You can't win with this one, can you? I didn't even give her that much. Sorry for that jiggle. I didn't give her that much because I know that she will <laughs> get leaf burn. And I just thought, well, just a little bit. It's getting hot. You're going to start to grow. <laughs> and then boomba. Yeah, we did it. 
Such a shame. Anyway, what I was impressed about with this orchid is that she was growing faster. <laughs> yes, even though she's a slow grower, I could see a change of dynamic with her and her leaves were getting bigger and they're much, much more stronger. So this leaf was from last year. This leaf was at the start in the middle here at the beginning of the season and look where it is now. That in one season has not happened with my lowy eye plus starting on the next one. So my leaves are getting stronger. There seems to be a little bit of a momentum of growth going, which is very welcome. <laughs> but I still won't see the blooms ever. It's just nice to have this orchid around, even though she's one of the slowest growers in my collection. Not the slowest, mind you, but one of them. Still, yeah, now that she's gaining momentum, of course, we're heading into the colder months of the year. Boo! <laughs> we'll probably not see anything in the coming six months and then hopefully she will pick up again where she left off come the warming up of the temperatures in spring of 2023. And then I wanted to update you on my Asconopsis Irene Dobkins because we did a care collab on her early in the year. She is such a reluctant root grower. It is frustrating. And she's not exactly a fast grower either. And on top of that, she got herself into the thrip situation with all the other ones, but that has been stopped. However, you can see the new leaf here has some damage. And if I turn her around, you will see even more damage on the back of the leaves. Look at that. That was not there when we did the care collab on this orchid. Look at that. Anyway, she was starting a new leaf, so I was very concerned. Did the thrips get all the way into the crown? So she finished this leaf off to a degree. And now this leaf in the middle was her second leaf of the season. The thrips timing came around about that. So she has some thrips damage right on the tip of the leaf, but <laughs> she's okay. The treatment worked and she's also grown a fantastic new root. I know it doesn't look like much in the pot here, but trust me for what this orchid normally does, seeing that white belayman curling and snaking down into the pot. Now that is a great root and I'm very grateful for it. So I've been soaking her a lot in calcium and magnesium. She's a warm to hot grower and well, yeah don't have to tell you what's coming up. <laughs> the date of this video will speak for itself, seeing as I'm here in southern Spain. It's not warm and hot all year round, unfortunately. At least we stopped the thrips. We've got ourselves a single root that I can see that is of substance, and I'm pumping her full of calcium and magnesium, preparing her for the inevitable. Here's another orchid that I want to show you. I have two. One is in a basket with lava rock, and this is the top piece of that same plant, which I cut into because I was getting deformed blooms. This is Neostylus Lucinary Blue, the most gorgeous blooms of a deep, rich, royal purple that have a hologram effect. Beautiful, beautiful orchid, but I've always had deformed blooms from her. So in the first year of my channel in 2020, I decapitated the top of it and I separated it out because I also wanted to see if there was Fusarium in there. No, she did not come in that infamous order. She came from another nursery. But anyway, there was no Fusarium in the stem at all. She looked wonderful and healthy and I plonked her into Lekka and self-watering unceremoniously. Meanwhile, that was a single fan back in the day in 2020. That was this fan. Since then, she's grown two new fans, which is awesome because to my understanding, these two fans are now blooming size. So probably February, March, hopefully she will bloom with a lot more spikes. And then we can see maybe one of the fans is going to give us some undeformed blooms, you know, normal blooms, not fused together petals and sepals. And I don't know what wacky things are going on in there. She has been residing, as she always does, on the east side of my patio, hence beautiful anthocyanin, but not to the point of burning. And the mother plant actually did get burnt at some point. Not much, but I got to be careful with this one. You see how quickly she colors up. Still, this one did not bloom for me in 2022, which was quite the surprise because in 2021, she did bloom for me. You can see all these spent flower spikes here. So yeah, I'm like, why not? Just like with the tetragonum, excuse me. I don't get a growth and from you, I don't get blooms. 
But meanwhile, it seems like in 2022, she was busy on the root production front, so I will forgive her. And everything in this pot is just going beautifully. So yeah, my expectations are pretty, pretty high when it comes to 2023. Especially with the Rinko Stylus parent and their me trying to make sure that the roots continue growing. You can see that there's constantly something interfering. The dry air, the cold, whatever it is. She took to Lekka and self-watering without flinching. While the other piece, the original piece, is doing fabulously in lava rock and an open airy basket. I don't know. We shall see. I thought initially the basket was too dry for her. And for that reason, I have deformed blooms. Then I thought, okay, like I'm self-watering, I got deformed blooms. And then I backed off on seaweed, calcium, magnesium, and fertilizer for an entire year, thinking that maybe there's a hormonal issue with her. Still got deformed blooms <laughs> in 2022. My watering, fertilizing, and supplementation regime was full on as if there was nothing wrong with the orchid. And the growth has been exponential. She looks much, much better than the one that I have in the basket because I don't have this leaf span from the other one. So Lekka and self-watering. I'm very pleased with the progress of this orchid. Blooms or not, but yeah, my expectations are raised. <laughs> Another warm to hot grower that I absolutely adore, even though I have never seen this orchid bloom in my collection. This is Dendromia monificum or as I bought it, Inobulbum munificum. There are quite a few orchids in my collection where I have never seen the blooms. I just love the orchids for how they grow. Now, I've got her facing this way because, yeah, you see this? This is cold damage from winter, spring 2021, 2022. Warm to hot grower did not appreciate what she had to deal with in my circumstances. And I was waiting for this growth that did form throughout the winter spring season at very, very low light levels. This orchid loving her light, but not direct sun. I was waiting for this growth to produce roots because I'm dying to get into this pot. Since her arrival in my collection in 2019, she has not been repotted. So that pot has never had a root ball cleanup. And normally I like to go every two years, every three years. Yeah, I'm now into my third year and that is concerning me a little bit. However, it doesn't seem to phase her so I can rest easy because can you see? I hope you can see this. Let me get her a little bit closer. Look at this new growth. Look at this. Look at the size of it. Okay, you will probably go, okay, new growth, pretty, nice, yay. Celebrate, what's the big deal? Oh, the big deal is I have never seen a new growth from this orchid grow this big and chunky as a spear from jump. Never. Normally, sorry for the jiggle. Normally, you see how tiny she is because she came to me as a seedling and then she grew two very small growths in succession and then bit by bit in the back here, you can see how the growth start to grow. There's a size jump every year, this being the most recent one. But the spears were never this big and chunky. Ah, oh, I just had to show this to you because again, this orchid doesn't feature a lot in any of my videos. I love this orchid. I don't do it justice, but you know, there's nothing really to show. She sat all throughout summer pretty much doing, you know, nothing, as I like to say. <laughs> nothing doesn't mean we don't see what's going on. And I was so surprised to see this so soon, because normally she, <laughs> she graces me with a new growth during the darkest and coldest months of the year. And I'm almost like, I don't stand a chance. I can't help you. I'm so sorry. But hey, I am pleased with this growth, even though maybe I could have doubled that size jump by fertilizing and giving her the right conditions. Having this one start now, it's giving me at least two months where her temperatures are still adequate, where she still appreciates what I can provide, including light. And then at least we've got enough energy in there for that growth to maybe, maybe double in size to this one. Now I'm not saying to get to bloom, I believe if I can get this orchid to bloom, it would be 2024. And I'm very conservative to say if, 
that I can do that, not because I don't have light and warmth, it's just during the months that the growths develop, that's when I don't have light and warmth and this orchid would prefer the opposite but still I love this orchid I love the funky pseudobulbs I do not peel the sheaths of the pseudobulbs like I would normally do I think all of this just adds to the charm but look at these fuzzy fibers here if the pseudobulbs were to be peeled that's not my doing that's how she arrived oh but look at this growth Oh, it's amazing. Oh, the flowers on this orchid. Oh, they are a spray. They would spill over the pot and then they are a brown burnt, bronzy kind of color mixed in with a chartreuse. Also, a you know, a dirty yellow kind of color, but gorgeous and pendant and highly fragrant. So there's hope. <laughs> I'm loving what I'm seeing. And if you are wondering and scratching your head, you saw lots of foliage, but these orchids didn't feature and if they had featured I wanted to update on them and I don't want to make this video too long there's other orchids I want to update on eventually we'll get around to that but I thought yes these guys are doing something that I find of interest or as in the case of the tetragonum surprise absolutely zip zero zilch nada that in my eyes is worthy of an update I hope you enjoyed having a look at what I consider my rare orchids. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. If you have any questions about any of these candidates, please ask away in the comments. That section is there for a reason. Use it, abuse it. I'm always happy to hear from you. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.